Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. The Grand Forks Air Force Base has been chosen as a safe haven for aircraft in Kansas, where severe weather is a concern. Throughout the day, the Kansas City area has been hit by large hail and strong winds. Thank you for joining us. The tanker planes that were housed in Kansas are now safe at the Grand Forks Air Base. Valley News Team's Neil Carlson was there as the planes landed out of harm's way this afternoon. It was December of 2010 when the last KC-135 air refueling tanker left Grand Forks for its new home at McConnell Air Base in Wichita. Today, they're back seeking safe haven from storms blasting across Kansas and Nebraska. In all, 17 KC-135 tanker planes are taking refuge here in Grand Forks. Most are from McConnell Air Base in Kansas. There will also be a few planes from Offutt at Omaha, Nebraska. The reason for moving the planes out of the storm's path is actually twofold. In this case, there could be tornadoes. There could also be a hail, uh, strong winds. Uh, sometimes it's not even a factor of the fact that uh, there's damage to the airplane, but that they also may just have to sit there and not have the conditions to take off and perform their mission. So by coming up here, it allows them to either keep the airplane safe and or perform their mission. So now the planes, along with 100 airmen, will call the Grand Forks Air Base home for a day or two until the bad weather passes down south. We do support a lot of different uh, air bases out there that have to do weather diverts, and so this is a great opportunity. Grand Forks is a vital uh, location and asset for the base. So after a six-year absence, severe weather brings the tankers home to their original base, at least for a short visit. From the Grand Forks Air Force Base, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. This isn't the first time this has happened. Several Air Force planes were also diverted to Grand Forks last summer because of severe weather down south. We had a small break from the rain today, but don't get used to it. Here's Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson with a look at tonight's forecast. Hutch? Well, for most of us, cool and gray weather will continue here in the northern plains. As we take a look at that national picture, as Neil was just speaking of, severe weather really firing up now in places like Kansas, southern Nebraska, all the way down through Oklahoma and Texas. Some snowfall near Rapid City for us, like mentioned just a little bit of a break from the rain a few sprinkle drops here and there but our chances for rain will actually increase as we go through the overnight your planner shows temperature near 50 degrees the next couple of hours and then slipping back into the mid 40s this evening best chance of rain will come in the overnight hours for Fargo Moorhead as we take a look up to the north expect mid 40s by this evening an east wind at 10 to 15 miles per hour so Bundle up if you're heading out and about. It does look like sunshine returns to the valley, and some of you saw it today, but it was way up north where they had near, nearly 60 degrees mm -hmm. in Kitson County. We're nowhere near that today in Fargo. No, afraid not. Right. Thanks, so. Hutch. Yep. All right, the Thompson Police Department is warning people to keep an eye out for suspicious activity after two forced entries into locked homes. Each of the break-ins happened at homes in the city of Thompson, which is about seven miles southwest of Grand Forks. In both cases, entry was made through locked basement egress windows. Thompson's police say it's possible people are checking for medication and then quickly leaving. They say valuables in plain view have been ignored. The same activity has been reported in Trail County. They ask people to keep locking up homes and vehicles and report any odd activity to the Thompson Police Department. If you have prescriptions that are expired or no longer needed, National Drug Take Back Day is happening on Saturday, April 30th. You can dispose of drugs for free, no questions asked. To find a drop-off site near you, we have a link under the hot button at valleynewslive.com. The early spring is turning into a bit of a boom for Fargo-Moorhead area home builders. The Builders Association says the number of permits for single-family homes is up in this year's first quarter. And they say Fargo is leading the way. The number of permits for housing issued in Fargo-Moorhead, West Fargo and Dilworth total 115 through the end of March. And that's off a bit from the same quarter last year. They say that's because there are fewer row houses and twin homes being built. But the spring of 2016 finds 43 new single-family homes being built in Fargo. Last year at the same time, there were only eight. With all the work that slowed down out west, it's brought a lot of labor 
back into this area. And I think it's it bodes well for the builders, and they're they're having a good start to the season because of how the weather was and everything. So they continue to thrive in this community the way it looks. West Fargo also saw an increase in single-family homes, while more heads dropped from 14 to 7. And if you would like to check out some of the new homes in the metro area, the annual Parade of Homes begins Thursday. The refugee resettlement situation in Fargo is now being discussed at a statewide level. Yesterday on 630 Point of View, North Dakota House Majority Leader Al Carlson said he would consider suing the federal government over bringing more refugees to Fargo and North Dakota in general. Tennessee has already sued the federal government over this program on 10th Amendment grounds. Texas and Alabama have also done so, but on narrower grounds. And we believe that the 10th Amendment is, is, was there for a reason. All those powers not granted to the federal government belong to the states. And, and we need to make sure that we are not run over like a freight train. And I think in Tennessee, I read the article you sent me, they did the right thing. Valley News Live is reaching out to North Dakota Attorney General Wayne Stengem for his take on the issue. We're also looking for a reaction from Lutheran Social Services in Fargo. Check back for updates tonight on Valley News Live at 6. A 45-year-old man has died in an ATV accident in Walsh County. Wade Colgard of Park River was found on a private agricultural field northeast of the junction of highways 32 and 17 and west of Park River. Colgard was driving when the rollover occurred. Authorities believe a change in terrain caused this slow-speed rollover. He died from injuries sustained in that crash. More than 500 delegates are at stake today as Pennsylvania, Maryland, Delaware, Connecticut and Rhode Island hold their primaries. Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton are expected to have clean sweeps. The Republican race is far more chaotic than the Democratic one, fueled by an unexpected twist. Weijia Zhang has the latest from Philadelphia. Voters in five states are playing key roles in the presidential race today, especially on the Republican side. Frontrunner Donald Trump says it's time for his challengers to go. They ought to both drop out of the race, so we ought to unify the Republican Party. Polls suggest Trump will win all of Tuesday's contests. Rivals Ted Cruz and John Kasich made an unconventional pact to slow Trump's momentum. Kasich won't compete in Indiana, the next state to vote. If you don't want to see Hillary Clinton as the president and nominating Donald Trump ensures that Hillary Clinton wins the general, then I would ask Governor Kasich's supporters to stand with us. The latest CBS News battleground tracker shows Trump with a five-point lead over Cruz. In the Democratic race today, Hillary Clinton is the favorite to win. She'll spend the night here in Philadelphia waiting for results. But first, Clinton made a quick trip to Indiana to meet with workers at a steel company. Steel is crucial to our manufacturing base, crucial to our national security, and I will not let this vital industry disappear. Bernie Sanders spent the morning meeting voters in Philadelphia. He says he plans to stay in the race until the convention returns to Philly this summer. Weijia Jang at CBS News, Philadelphia. Sanders says he wants a strong voice on the Democratic Party platform at the convention in order to push issues that are important to him, such as breaking up big banks and eliminating income inequality. We have some breaking news to report. The search is over tonight for this man, Todd Logan, after the Douglas County Sheriff's Office says he has been found. Logan had been missing since Saturday afternoon, and he was believed to be near Stowe's Lake in northwest Douglas County. Further information has not yet been released. Crookston police are searching for a snake that's about five to six feet long. It was seen on the north side of Crookston in the 1600 block of Radisson Road. Crookston police say they're working to verify the sighting and determine the type of snake. Reports say it looks similar to a hog nose snake. Police say it's possible that someone's pet got away. It's not likely the snake is moving around in our cool temperatures. If anyone owns a large snake in the Crookston area, or if you have seen one, you're asked to call Crookston police. You may be getting ready for cleanup week, but before you put those unwanted items on your curb, city crews want you to think about recycling them instead. Each person's trash is 40% recyclable. Minn Kota Recycling wants to remind people items like cardboard, magazines, and aluminum cans should all be recycled instead of put on the curbs.
You know, when I drive by those piles that are sitting out on the curb, I look and see a lot of corrugated cardboard and plastic items that can be recycled. I hope people take time and make sure that that material gets to the drop sites or put on your curbside collection for recycling instead of being thrown away in a landfill forever. Cities will not pick up items like TVs and computers this weekend. Both Clay County and the city of Fargo are holding electronic recycling events to safely and responsibly recycle those items.